This video will give you an introduction to the basics of hydraulic simulation or better simulation of hydraulics. My name is Ronald and I will put you through this video. First we start with, with some elementary definitions to have a common understanding of what we are talking about. Next we take a look onto elementary components with which most components in hydraulics are modeled. In the third part of the video I will explain some basics of hydraulics resistances. This video is a mix of a little bit of theory and practical exercises. All simulations are done with Altair Activate. A very very elementary definition is that we use the variables flow and pressure in hydraulics. A second elementary definition is the type of modeling. There are two kinds of modeling technical systems. The causal method and the acausal method. First one is well known from control design. The system is modeled signal based with blocks that have an input and an output and which are connected by directed signals. The second one uses an object oriented approach. Instead of blocks components are used that have neither inputs nor outputs but so-called connectors. And instead of signals flow and potential variables are exchanged between components. And in hydraulics these variables are flow and pressure. Looking at the calculation of power we can find the analogy in other domains. In common calculation of power is done by multiplication of flow variable and potential variable. In hydraulics it is a multiplication of flow and pressure. In electrical domain it is a multiplication of current and voltage and in mechanics it's velocity and force that are the equivalent variables. So knowing now that P and Q are basic variables, we take a look to the mechanism how they are connected. Here we have a very simple system with a pump, a resistor and a volume in between. The pump generates a flow which may depend on system pressure and the resistor also delivers a flow depending on pressure at side A and B. Inside the volume the potential variable P is calculated in dependency of all flows, bulk modulus of oil and the volume. A last note, the hydraulic library uses lumped parameters. In contrast to finite element models with distributed parameters, the characteristic of a component is concentrated in one point without a spatial extension. An example a volume between two or more components represents the total oil volume between them independent if it's a manifold block or a pipe. But now that's enough of elementary definitions. Let's have a look to activate. A good point to start with is to visualize the basic dynamics of pressure in a hydraulic system. Let us start with a very simple system always necessary. In every simulation model with hydraulics is an environment component and a fluid we want to use. Next we take a pump a volume and a tank. Connecting everything in order to see what happens we must add a pressure sensor and a scope.
All values are normally shown in SI units, but I like to see the pressure in bar. So I add a unit conversion. and set it to pressure and output to bar. And I change the simulator settings to final time to one second. That's enough in this case. Let's start the simulation. Let's have a look at the results. Ah, here we can see the pressure is rising from zero bar up to 30,000 bars. And I think the good engineer recognizes that there is no safety function in our model in form of a pressure relief valve, for example. But that the good thing of the simulation, we do not need to wipe up the oil. The first parameter we want to change is the capacity of the volume. It's set normally to one liter and I want to rise it to 10 liters. Now I'll simulate it again. Ah, and now we have a pressure rise very slow, just up to 1000 bar within one second. A further important parameter that has influence on the capacity is not inside the volume itself, but it's the characteristic of the fluid, the proportion of undissolved air. To see the influence, I changed the standard amount of 0.1% to 1%. The pressure rises later, but with a similar gradient. The undissolved, undissolved air only influence the capacity in a pressure range up to 20 bar. Over 20 bar, there is nearly no influence. Now let us extend our model. We take a resistor, add it to the volume, and at the end, here we need another tank. Here we can see the steady state value of pressure in this combination. We have nearly 5 bar of pressure that depends on the flow of the pump and the resistor here in the ideal resistor component. But what we can see here, what is important is that the pressure rises from initial value of 0 bar up to the steady state value. And that's the main effect of the capacity and the dynamic calculation of pressure in our simulation. After playing around with flow and pressure, we now take a look on the fundamental components that are the basis of most components in the hydraulic library. These are capacity, resistance and inductance. What we already saw is a capacity. A typical component is the volume. The corresponding equation is shown here. A typical component of resistance is the throttle and a typical component of conductance is a pipe. In summary, it can be said that C is a measure of how pressure reacts on flow, R is a measure of pressure drop at a certain flow and L is a measure of flow change in dependency of pressure difference. Although we have an analogy to electric resistances, and here I mean the linear ohmic resistance, there is a big difference. In hydraulics, the characteristic of a resistance depends on the flow regime. On the one hand, we have laminar flow, on the other hand, turbulent flow. Laminar flow is characterized by linear relation of flow and pressure difference. Turbulent flow shows a quadratic relation. 
typical components are throttle with laminar flow and an orifice with full turbulent flow. The hydraulics library contains both components, a throttle and an orifice, that are parameterized according to these equations with geometric parameters. A second, often used component is the ideal resistor. It also represents a throttle and an orifice, but with another parameterization. Instead of geometric parameters, nominal values of flow and pressure difference are used. Now, how are they parameterized? In the PQ diagram, we have to define the given flow curve. And for the linear graph, only two points are necessary. One is trivial, it is at zero, zero. The other one is defined by any nominal flow and the according nominal pressure or vice versa. The curve is fully defined and every PQ combination can be determined. In the next demo, we want to check the theory of resistor parameterization. Here we have, instead of a pump, a flow source, and in this case a variable flow source, with a ramp input, a volume, a resistor, a flow sensor, and a pressure sensor, and at the end a tank. The parameterization is as follows. We have here a throttle type resistor, a flow of 30 liters per minute, and a nominal pressure difference of 100 bar. And here in the ramp, we set a flow of 15 liters per minute. The duration of the ramp should be 10 seconds and the overall simulation time is 12 seconds. And now what do we expect? We have 30 liters per minute and a pressure difference of 100 bar. And here as an input, we have 15 liters per minute. So the pressure difference here should be half of 100 bar. I expect 50 bar. Let's check the flow. Here we have 15 liters per minute and the pressure, oh oh, it's just 40 bar. What happened? Hmm. Let us check the complete flow curve. I change it to 30 liters per minute again and see if the nominal value is reached. And here we see at 30 liters per minute, we have a pressure drop of 100 bar and that's okay. But what we also see is here, we don't have a straight graph, but a curved one. And this is caused by the pressure dependency of the viscosity. Therefore, we have only a pressure drop of around 40 bar at a flow of 15 liters per minute. A last demo model where we can see the influence of the mass of the oil inside the pipe more clearly is just a model with a pipe and the throttle and two volumes on the left and on the right side. The length of the throttle is 10 meters, the diameter 10 millimeters. The same with a pipe, 10 millimeters diameter, 10 meters long. And the only difference is now we set an initial pressure to this volume to 11 bar absolute pressure, that's 10 bar relative pressure. And on the right side, we have environment pressure. Let's have a look to the results. First at the throttle. Here, the pressure on the left side starts at 10 bar and drops. And the pressure on the right side starts at zero bar and rises. And what happens in the system with the pipe? Here we not just have a balance of the pressure between low and high pressure, but here we have also an oscillation. And that's a typical spring mass system here with the oil mass oscillating between the two oil springs. After these demos, it's time for you to start a simulation. 
Your task now is to set up a model with a comparison of throttle and orifice with geometric and nominal parameters. The results should be presented in diagrams flow versus pressure. With this task, we came to the end of this video. Last but not least, I appreciate the Altair MBD forum. It's a great place for questions and knowledge exchange. In addition, you will find there the solution of the task and the demo models used in this video. Thanks for watching and see you at the forum.